So the Supreme Court didn't just rule against the EPA last week. They saved us, or may have saved us, from modern socialism and Biden's regulatory state. Joining us now, Steve Forbes, Forbes Media Chairman and Editor-in-Chief and author of the terrific book, Inflation. You know, Steve, it was you, you coined this. I mean, you said this kind of socialism, modern socialism, they don't have to buy the means of production in the factories like Joe Stalin did in the 30s and 40s. They do it all through regulation. That was your idea, which I borrowed and attributed to you. Thank you. Uh, so now, question is, with this um, West Virginia versus EPA, um, is that unraveled? Is this regulatory socialism unraveled, do you think? Is this a real turning point? Uh, the answer is yes. That decision could be one of the most significant in Supreme Court history. Mm. They're going to get numerous other cases because the regulatory state's going to continue to push forward. But if the Supreme Court sticks to that kind of decision making, as they did in that West Virginia case, it will make a huge difference in the future of the United States. You know, regulatory agencies make three to 4,000 rules a year. Mm. Many of them have significant impact on the economy. Congress has uh, given up. It really pulled back from the kind of lawmaking they should be doing. And this, in effect, says if an agency wants to do something major that has a major impact on the economy, it must have congressional approval. Congress can't be, say, oh, it's the bureaucrats' fault. You've got to take responsibility. That's why you're elected. Step up and do your job. So as you watch this play out, are there benchmarks, are there signs that you'll know things have really changed in a major way? Yes. Just look at the docket of the Supreme Court. Because you mentioned earlier, uh, the regulatory agencies are at it again in terms of trying to close uh, most of the Permian Basin. That's right. Huge source of natural gas. Yep. Uh, we have the SEC with a 500-page rule they're trying to ram through for next year on climate change. So there are going to be a slew of cases coming. And if the Supreme Court sticks to what they did in the West Virginia case, that's going to finally uh, permeate, you might say, to lower courts <clears throat> and finally have legislatures and Congress do the job was elected to do. You want to pass a law, you pass it, and don't shuck it off on an agency and say, oh, I wash my hands of it. No more. No, it's interesting. We had just a moment ago uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, a pretty smart fellow, and I asked him, will you appeal this ozone regulation, which just oversteps, I mean, would end 40 percent of the oil and gas uh, in America, for heaven's sakes. And he said he, he will bring, they will bring a lawsuit and they will win the lawsuit and they will stop it. And that's very important because for over 100 years has been this idea, Woodrow Wilson, President Wilson and others had this idea that government in a modern society has to be governed by experts. Mm. So you had Dr. Fauci the other day saying, how dare courts uh, look at our decision making? We know what we're doing, they don't. And so that kind of arrogance, that kind of power grabbing by these regulatory agencies in the name of expertise, I think is going to be challenged. You want to do something, you got to have the, the, the permission of we the people. Yeah, you know, we had Gene Scalia on yesterday, for, former Labor Secretary, distinguished attorney, um, who went through, it really will cover FTC, FCC, SEC, Federal Reserve, all these people promulgating these massive economy-wide type regulations, as you say, for which there was never any legislation. So all that should be knocked out. It may take a few years, but maybe this is the beginning of the end and of the regulatory state. And that's how you revive state. democracy in America. When people realize in the public square you can make decisions, they're not going to be imposed from above. The poison that we had for 50 years of fighting Roe v. Wade, when if you left it with the states 50 years ago, they'd have sorted it out and not have the kind of a bitterness we have today. I think this is, revives the American experiment if they follow through the Supreme Court. Won't hurt the economy either. It'll help. Um, it'll, can, it'll help. Absolutely. Can, can I just do it the last minute? Sure. Uh, Boris Johnson has had to step down as prime minister. People are saying, the media is saying, well, they, you know, had drinks parties in the, uh, in the garden of uh, 10 Downing Street. Um, how about this? The economy was terrible. Turns out he was a greenie. Uh, when the North uh, Sea winds didn't blow, the economy imploded. He raised taxes. He had big social spending. He never pursued um, a free trade deal with the United States post-Brexit. I mean, why, did, why is Bojo gone? 
is it because he had too, too many beers in his garden, or is it because of this... Given, uh, given what he did, maybe he didn't have enough, uh, in, in, <laughs> in, in the sense that he was governing labor light, That's right. uh, doing what the That's Labor right. Party would do. And people say, well, if you're going to have labor policies, why not go for the real thing, which is why the Tories are so far down in the polls. Mm. If he'd done what Thatcher had done, deregulate, cut taxes, remove regulations, allow for the development of natural gas in Britain and the North Sea, uh, Britain would be thriving. It would show that Brexit worked. We'd have had a free trade agreement. We'd have benefited, and he would have been a hero. People would say, oh, Boris, he does crazy things, but they wouldn't have run him from office. Yeah, a couple of cocktails shouldn't have disqualified him. Um, I can't tell you how many meetings we had with him, uh, with the president, uh, Mnuchin and I, and we always used to say to him, you, you're liberated from the European Union, okay? The shackles are off. Slash taxes, slash regulations, and then come to us for a free trade agreement. He did none of that. None of that. He they, never... they, they could have made... They could have Remember made we the talked... From Switzerland, from Singapore, and other uh, countries and things that work around the world, and made Britain a dynamic powerhouse as it was becoming under Margaret Thatcher. They'd have led Europe. They'd have been an right. inspiration for Europe. Here's how you move forward. Instead, look what we have today. I know. I used to call it Magna Carta 2.0. That was the opportunity they had leaving uh, the European Union. And it didn't And, and they'd have out. saved Europe by the example they set. No, maybe so. No, no, that's an interesting point. Especially for the Central European countries yeah. and the Baltic states who want to move ahead, aren't tied down to the past the way Germany and France and are love in terms freedom. of economic policy. Yeah. And love freedom. Yeah. And free markets. Yeah. And opportunities. Steve Good Ford, stuff. You are the best. I think this regulatory state is coming to an end. I agree with you. I think this was the most important decision the Supreme Court made. It had long-lasting effects, good yes. effects, positive effects on the economy. Yes. Steve Forbes, thank you. Larry, Appreciate thank it very, you. very much.